Hello, folks, and welcome to our webinar today, The Importance of Connectivity. My name is Kevin McCluskey. I'm co-director of sales engineering at Inductive Automation, and I'm joined by a couple of fine gentlemen from Element 8, um, Leonard and, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Yako, I believe is how you pronounce your name. I always get it wrong, though. <laughs> so, um, would, you, would you each mind uh, giving a quick introduction to yourselves as well? Um, as we kick off here. Yeah, 100 percent. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Um, as uh, as Kevin mentioned, my name is Yaku Marquat. Um, I'm the managing director of uh, Element ATN South Africa. And uh, also on the call with me is, or with us rather, is Lenny Smith, who's our customer success manager here at Element 8 as well. Uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, we, we look forward to, to spend some quality time with you today. Hey. Thanks, Yako. Um, all right, so I wanted to very quickly start us out with an agenda. I uh, appreciate everyone being here with us. Uh, we have some really interesting and I think exciting things to talk about here today. Um, the, I can just, um, you know, move forward here. Uh, today's agenda, um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, multiple things here. So we'll start out talking a little bit about why connectivity is so important. We all realize that connectivity is important, but you know what makes it uh, different today? Um, we have a few inspiring stories that we can talk about um, that are exciting to me. Uh, roadblocks to connectivity, uh, things that you might come across along the way that you have difficulty getting past, and some of the things about uh, inductive automation and ignition, our product that we're going to be talking about here some, uh, that helps alleviate some of those roadblocks. Uh, we have three different forms of connectivity. And of course, this webinar, it's about just general um, connection um, and the importance of connectivity, but uh, it also includes details about our software. And so we'll be talking about things from that perspective as well. Um, we'll be talking a bit about the latest version of Ignition and the perspective module, which is something that allows for web-based visualization and allows for the ability to quickly do mobile devices and web interfaces. We'll talk about security because security is paramount for all of these systems. And we'll actually give some examples of architectures and a demonstration of everything that we're talking about here. And then follow it up with a Q&A. So, Throughout the whole presentation, as you have questions, you can go ahead and ask those questions. There's a little uh, questions panel that you can hop into over in the GoToMeeting panel that you have there, uh, the GoToWebinar panel. And if you ask questions, we can answer some of those along the way. Um, if we don't get to them along the way, we will certainly answer them at the end. And we have 10 or 15 minutes set aside for questions. So don't be shy. Uh, we love questions. and uh, there's a lot of information that we have that we are very happy to share. So, first introductions. Uh, you got a little bit of an introdu introduction to each one of us. I didn't give as much of an introduction to, to me, uh, but uh, so my name is Kevin McCluskey. I'm sales. Uh, uh, I'm a sales engineer, and I'm also co-director of sales engineering with Inductive Automation. And I've been with the company for about 10 years, uh, coming up on 11 years, actually. So I've worked with hundreds of customers who are rolling out enterprise uh, applications, uh, all the way from folks who are doing individual installations on small systems uh, and just adding a little bit of visualization or a little bit of data collection, all the way up to folks who are doing full rollouts for hundreds of locations. And, um, hundreds of plants and pulling information back to central locations and um, dashboarding and uh, CEO uh, visibility into uh, the overall operation. Uh, so there's there's a whole wide range of things that our software is used in, and I've worked with a lot of folks. And uh, in terms of questions, as you're asking questions, I go anywhere from the bits and bytes down on the engineering side up to uh, all the way to, to business value, really. I'm an engineer at heart, and I am happy to answer anything from a technical standpoint. Um, but we'll try not to have this be too technical of a presentation for all of this, because there's there's a lot of value and a lot of things that we can show that I feel like 
speak really well, um, not even getting into the technical weeds, but just taking a look at it at a um, high level and uh, seeing some of the results that you can get in a very short time. Uh, so Inductive Automation is a company that's been around for a little bit longer than I've been with the company. We've been around since 2003 uh, and we're based out of California. Uh, and we do a software called, called Ignition. And uh, you probably have heard of Ignition. That's probably part of why you're here. But even if you haven't, uh, that's great. We have a, a nice introduction here to Ignition overall. And we're joined by Element 8. So, Yako, over to you to uh, give us a quick introduction to who Element 8 is. Awesome. Thanks, Kev. Uh, yeah, I suppose, first of all, it's lovely to see some familiar names and uh, I, I suppose I can I can visualize the faces um, on the call. Um, I haven't I haven't seen or spoken with the, with a few of, of you folks for quite a while. So it's really, really nice, encouraging to see you on the call. Um, and for those of you that we have not yet met, we look, we look forward to meeting with all of you, all of you soon over the next couple of weeks and months. So although the Element 8 team has been serving as individuals the industrial automation market for, for nearly two decades, um, it's, it's sure hard, hard to imagine that, but it's real. Uh, we are a brand new business. Um, our team grew up in the manufacturing and industrial automation world. Um, and really over the past 20 years, we heard firsthand from the community how frustrated they were with, with complicated and expensive solutions. So our team went in search of the most powerful, intuitive and unlimited solution. Um, and here we are today. We, we're usually excited and proud to be the authorized distributor for the, for the incredible Ignition platform in South Africa and the Southern African market. Uh, we're open for business. Our, our technical support and enablement function is live um, and the team is ready to help. Um, our business will also, uh, sorry, our website will also be live shortly which will mark our official digital launch. Um, certified training will also be available at our office in four ways. Um, and we're hoping, depending on how we progress with the, progress with the phasing of, of uh, the COVID-19 lockdown, we're hoping to have our inaugural live community event um, this October in Johannesburg. Um, I've already introduced Lenny. Lenny will, will uh, 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 share some thoughts with you in a moment, but um, together with Clarice, who heads up our marketing, we're building out our team. And uh, it really is a team that is fueled by the passion of providing our industry, community, and you with a new way and experience built on Ignition. Um, and we look forward to serving you. So, so thank you again for joining us and uh, thank you for the introduction and opportunity, Kevin. Sure, thanks, Akio. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention here uh, is our inductive automation distributor program. So inductive automation is based out of uh, the United States, based out of California, uh, but we have presence around the world where uh, we have folks using Ignition in over 100 countries. Um, we have uh, thousands of integrators who are in our integrator program. Um, but we realize that certain markets, it makes a lot of sense to have local folks. So we started our distributor program uh, and we have a handful of distributors around the world who are companies that are very well vetted by inductive automation. They're companies uh, who we feel you can put a lot of trust in um, and who are going to be able to support the local market, who are going to be able to provide a very high level of technical support, um, provide uh, individual help for purchases of Ignition uh, and be a contact uh, locally and, uh, you know, be, be folks who are able to be boots on the ground, essentially in different areas. And so Element 8 has gone through a very extensive vetting process and um, we are very happy to have Element 8 on board. Uh, we are very happy about the relationship that we have, and uh, we're looking forward to going forward here. So um, obviously, we are providing a lot of support, and we're providing a good portion of this webinar. I'll be talking for a lot of this, and then uh, Element 8 will be mentioning some things along the way as well, and talking through a few things, and I'll be giving a demo. Uh, so uh, enough said about that, but uh, you know, we're, we're really happy to be doing this right now. All right, so if we're to launch in here, um, so why is connectivity so important? And my colleague, Travis Cox, who's uh, talking about this with me recently, um, 
he liked to give this analogy. If you take a look at this, and you take a look at our current situation, and you take a look at the world situation right now, this difficult time, can you imagine this time if we didn't have connectivity? Can you imagine it if we had no cell phones, if we had no ability to talk to or to get online or to have screen sharing or to have webinars like this um, or to have connection to family or friends? It would be a very different time. Uh, it, it's already a very difficult time, um, but I think if you take a step back and really realize how far we've come as a society in terms of connectivity, it really opens that up on a personal level. Having that connectivity allows for that remote access, allows for the remote access to folks, to friends, to family. It allows for folks to stay connected inside emergencies and during emergencies, such as our current situation. Um, it also is something that we have come and grown to expect. So if we are needing to connect with someone or with something, what's the typical response now? You pull out your phone, uh, you have your smartphone, you want to pull up information, you want to pull up details on something, you want to do a search, you want to take a look at information that you need right then, uh, you have access to do that. And there's an expectation at this point, I think it's fair to say that most folks want to be able to do that or expect to be able to do that uh, in, in most areas of the world. And as part of that, you actually get a variety of benefits. And this applies not only to on a personal level, of course, but if you're talking about industrial processes, if you're talking about uh, places that SCADAs are used, if you're talking about places that IIoT platforms are used or other technologies or just accessing your business remotely, um, these benefits are the same. Uh, you have speed, you can very quickly make decisions. You have the ability to access different things that you probably need to have that information in order to make those speedy decisions. Uh, the reliability is something that uh, used to be um, one of the considerations and now is seen more as a benefit because systems have become so reliable uh, for the most part that you normally have an expectation about that. Uh, the flexibility, the ability to be anywhere that you want and do the things that you need to do uh, is a real benefit. And if you take a look at this from the standpoint of having a mobile application or having a desktop web browser-based application that you have access to a plant floor or to a factory phone from, you have a real cost savings and a return on investment that can be pretty significant. If you can make quick decisions about what needs to happen at a specific time when something's happening in real time, it could easily lead to avoiding a situation that would be costly or making a decision that saves significant costs. So, oh yeah, um, and uh, so so at this point, this is uh, this is a story that I'm going to pass this over to uh, Yako and Lenny here to uh, talk a little bit about some of their personal experience with all of us. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And maybe just perhaps add some local context and, and urgency, really. I, I suppose, like everywhere, we have here in South Africa seen massive and, and really just unprecedented disruption over the past weeks. Um, and this Friday, South Africa will enter level four of lockdown um, starting this Friday. I, I'm not going to go into the detail for those of, of, of us that are hopefully we're all familiar with what that means, but this Friday we'll enter level four of lockdown. And broadly for the for the mining and manufacturing world, there will either mean 100% for, for, for example, uh, open cast mining, 50% capacity for other parts of mining and, and manufacturing, and, and a, as a broad baseline, 20% sort of capacity and, and functionality for all of manufacturing. Um, so it is a phased approach, but I, I suppose with that, there's really the opportunity for us to improve our strategy and, and operations and the way that we we do business as as teams um, with uh, as individual contributors and teams. 
So COVID-19 has really exposed the vulnerabilities in, in supply chain and, and operational resilience of, of our manufacturing here in South Africa. Um, and it has really highlighted the need for a more lean, agile and adaptable approach. And the kind of always on capability or mentality really that, that Kevin man mentioned. Um, and it has also very rapidly accelerated our team towards a fully digital workplace. Um, where probably most, I would safely say, most teams were not prepared for or enabled uh, enabled for. And the best digital workplace really brings together all of these tools into one cohesive productive environment. And uh, really the starting point uh, or what the best digital workplace really enables is, is a mobile working from any device anywhere or that always on <clears throat> mentality that Kevin, uh, that Kevin that you mentioned. And uh, what does that really look like um, for example, our system integrators and, and our users here in South Africa? Um, Lenny? Cool, perfect. Thanks, Yaku. Um, so yeah, as a, as a system integrator, I've been speaking to some of the system integrators uh, during the week and um, some of them, depending on your client base and obviously are you delivering essential service and to which industries you are actually delivering services. But a lot of the SIs that I've been speaking to are starting to, to actually run out of, of work. Um, they've done what they could um, and they're pretty much stuck at home. But but that's not, that's not there's a massive opportunity um, because as, as people are coming into and out of lockdown phases and potentially going back to different phases and who knows what that's going to do from a, from a manufacturing perspective, but Customers at this point in time, just like we are providing online digital learning experiences, et cetera, customers want this data right here and they're in their fingertips for their plants. Um, now, as uh, Kevin mentioned that Ignition's got the new perspective module, which is pretty much their web development module that we can easily um, put onto a site, connect to legacy or, or current systems and actually provide that connectivity and that data and information right there and there into the user's hand. Now, the beauty about this is, is that we're actually allowing the integrator to actually develop these projects right there and there in the house. They don't have to, to, to you know, break the curfew or the extensions of what lockdown's been imposed to them. Um, and they can do it right there and there from their home. Um, and it's very simple to actually get access to this data. All that needs to happen is you need to get a URL available to your client at the end of the day by using this new web module. So integrators can still play a massive part by sitting at home and developing these solutions to get this digital transformation and all this information to the people at their, ho at their homes. And, and developers can continue this. Um, they can continue to develop, they can continue to provide services, although we are bound to the confinements of, of our homes. Now, from the end user perspective, um, not all of the end users might be able to return to work. Um, as Yaku mentioned, open cost mining, only 50% of the workforce, 100% uh, of the workforce, but other mining might only be 50%. So there will still be a massive amount of people that's sitting at home that needs to have access. Um, we've got one story that we're working on where the facility is about 200 kilometers away from where the people are, are situated in lockdown and they need that data. Now with this, to get that data, they're revamping the entire information management model to see how they can remotely get that. And obviously Ignition plays a massive role into that. Um, a lot of companies are still running with just a minimal skeleton crew on site, uh, but potentially the maintenance manager must still be at home and they need to work together to solve problems on these sites. Um, so be able to give this information to everybody to keep everybody into the loop is extremely valuable and, and probably will be extremely valuable for potentially after lockdown, um, I can definitely see that this is opening up a complete new way of work, how people will work in the future and the ability to get that information quickly from anywhere, from a mobile device, from your home, on your smart TV is definitely something that will happen and, and I'm sure will, will continue as, as we go forward. But you can, you can probably imagine, tell me Lenny, you, you're sounding like it's a very simple process. Um, I've got legacy stuff. There must be some roadblocks. It can't be just as simple as employing a, a module. Uh, but I'm sure, Kevin, you can maybe talk through all of those and tell us that it is actually that that simple and possible to do. Sure, sure. Uh, 
you know, and I'm an engineer at heart, as I mentioned before. So um, I'm certainly not going to tell you that for 100% of the cases, it's that simple, but I can tell you for 90, 95% of the cases, uh, there's a very good chance that it could be that simple. Uh, and I'm excited to show off some of this because it, you know, there's there's a ton of power here. I, I have a background inside integration myself. I worked for a systems integrator for a number of years before coming to Invective Automation. And back then, nothing like this existed. So it's really fun to talk about. Uh, thanks for going through all of that. Uh, let me jump to the next item here. So uh, roadblocks to connectivity. If we're taking a look at the typical roadblocks, um, as I said, I used to work for a systems integrator, so I'm pretty familiar with these roadblocks. Uh, legacy proprietary software or communications can be one of those significant roadblocks. Um, restrictive licensing models. Uh, if you're trying to use software and you want to open it up to lots of folks, uh, sometimes it's per seat or per tag licensing. Um, difficulty in deploying applications where it's uh, there's separate client installs or there, there could be uh, different deployment rules that need to come into play uh, or different networking things that, that are difficult or it's difficult to get security right. Uh, tied to a specific operating system. You might have to have a version, you might even have to have a specific patch set in an operating system to get things going. Um, Non-standards based for some of these technologies um, and doesn't use the latest technology. So some, some of these are using uh, sets that are feature sets, libraries that are, that are very old um, that are not able to take advantage of some of the connectivity that you might need today. Uh, and then there's that OT-IT divide. Of course, we're talking a bit about Ignition and our software. Um, so this is a little bit in contrast to that. So for inductive automation, each one of those points, we've worked really hard to try to eliminate those roadblocks. Uh, we have integrator roots and our, our whole company, our CEO, our founder, uh, had an integration business that he ran for 20, 25 years before starting inductive automation. Uh, so there are very deep integration routes in terms of the point, pain points that we were trying to solve. Connectivity is part of our DNA, but it's part of what we do, where we started. Um, we started with IT technologies and OT technologies at the same time. Uh, started after the web started, started after, uh, you know, it was 2003 when we started. So um, these technologies were already in place. We didn't really have a legacy that we needed to hold on to or protect. Uh, and we also started with a modular platform idea so we can add and adapt to new technologies without uh, abandoning old technologies. Uh, so we can solve, so, so we're coming in with a solving problem attitude. Um, we, Ignition works really hard to provide access to just about everyone. Um, we do have an unlimited licensing model, so unlimited tags, unlimited clients. And if you hear that and you're used to some of the other softwares out there you and you haven't heard that before, you might say, but Kevin, how, how do you do that? That's not possible and nobody else does that. Um, well, we made an early decision to do that. So. Uh, all of our default packages are unlimited in terms of uh, licensing when it comes to tags and when it comes to clients. And when it comes to designers, um, that's all built in. We wanted to just take the roadblocks away and make it so that it was easy to do things, as you can see, fun and affordable. We really wanted it to be a lot of fun and a joy to work with. Our mission statement, Inductive Automation, our mission is to create industrial software that empowers our customers to swiftly turn great ideas into reality by removing all technological and economic obstacles. That's kind of our North Star. That's what we go for as a company every day. And the OTIT friction that we've seen a lot of times, Ignition really helps bridge that gap as well because Ignition uses a lot of IT technologies that live right in the middle there. So Ignition is going to be able to talk to Active Directory, and it's going to be able to talk to identity providers. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if I throw in a few technical acronyms, SAML and OIDC and um, some of these other technologies, uh, it's almost entirely IP-based. Uh, it's gonna run over Ethernet networks or anything that can ping other devices. 
there's access and there's support for SSL and TLS and uh, they, SQL database connections and encryption just about everywhere. And so we, we set it up in a way that a lot of IT departments just understand it, uh, whereas a lot of traditional software has a lot of different packages to install uh, Ignition as a single package and install that and uh, the modules come with it and you're good to go. And it runs on a lot of standard IT technologies instead of requiring a certain patch set on, on Windows, it's fully cross-platform and it'll run on different items. Um, and I've already mentioned some of these things here as I was as, as I got excited about that OTIT slide, but uh, the unlimited licensing model, I uh, mentioned that cross-platform compatibility, a Linux, Windows, OS X for the server, and then for the clients, uh, you have web-based clients, you have mobile devices, um, and then we also have options for desktop clients. And so those are cross-platform as well. Uh, based on IT standard technologies, scalable for server client architecture that we have inside Ignition, web managed, web based. Uh, we have a nice web interface for managing things. Uh, modular configurability uh, with multiple different modules that can be loaded in. And if you take a look at the connectivity, there are three main forms of connectivity. So if we start with data, uh, which is devices, PLCs, and tags. Uh, getting access to that data is vital to any project and we try to make that easy so unlimited licensing model is inside ignition you don't have to worry about the number of tags or the amount of data that's going through um, the access so the iiot protocols like mqtt uh, allow for some access to some of that stranded data in a really easy way low bandwidth way um, if you're not using those, you can still get access to that data, the, uh, but there are a lot of options for communication and connectivity there. Uh, we have found that about 90% of data is stranded in the field, is not pulled in, there are tags that aren't collected uh, simply because someone doesn't want to load down a system or they're worried about the number of tags that they have licenses for. Ignition takes away that worry uh, since you don't have a tag limitation. Of course, the hardware does at some point, uh, but that's somewhere between 500,000 and a million tags in, in general. Um, so um, uh, if, you're, if you're running a dedicated I.O. server, if you're running everything together, it might be 250,000, but it's still you know, at least a quarter million tags that you're going to get per server. And then you can link multiple servers together if you want to. So uh, those numbers normally fine for any smaller, medium size installation, large installations. We have a lot of folks who are doing what's called a scale out architecture. Uh, so you can really grow to millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions of tags uh, inside an overall system that is composed of a few different ignition gateways, uh, ignition servers. Uh, we have native drivers for a, about a dozen uh, driver suites. Um, we of course talk over OPC UA as well out uh, to other driver suites uh, and one important note about OPC UA is that we can fairly easily connect to lots of existing SCADA systems. So Ignition is not necessarily something that you put in place and you replace things with. Ignition can be a system, and a lot of folks do this for remote connectivity, where you install it right alongside something that exists but it makes accessing that data, uh, creating reports, having visuals for folks, especially remote folks, makes that much, much easier than it would be if you were to try to uh, spin up another server of maybe the existing system. So having Ignition right next to it, connect over OPC, publish that out to clients can be a very quick thing to do. Uh, MQTT is another good example of a protocol that's easy to connect to. Ignition has a gateway network to communicate between servers. Uh, cloud injectors to go to AWS and Azure and Watson and Google Cloud Platform. Uh, Ignition Edge, uh, if you need to run either an HMI or you need to do the small data collection unit and you need store and forward inside that, uh, it acts in both of those capacities. It also acts as, uh, as edge computing. So if you have some process you need to run, if, you're, if you've gone relatively advanced or you're looking to and you want to do machine learning models that are running on the edge, uh, Ignition Edge can take those and um, execute them locally. 
Uh, and that might even be a system that doesn't have connectivity locally um, or connectivity centrally. Um, generally speaking, most folks do and most folks want to. And in order to access that from your mobile device, you would want to have that connectivity. But technically, um, Ignition Edge can run standalone as well. Um, and yeah, you can deploy in any architecture. So a lot of folks do this on-premise. Um, a number of folks are doing things through the cloud. And one thing that Ignition really excels at is combining those disparate systems together into a single location. Next form of connectivity here is configuration. So inside Ignition, you have configuration UIs. You have a drag and drop designer. There's a single environment for doing the configuration of a project uh, for building out different items. On the right-hand side, you see it there, and you'll see a little bit more in just a moment as I pull up and uh, create a demo here for you. Uh, there's, it's on-premise, uh, it can be remote, it can be over VPN. For clients, there's no installation, uh, there's no restoring backups, there's no licensing. Um, that's easy to just pull these things up inside a web browser for the configuration on the uh, web pages. Uh, that's very simple too. Uh, if you're doing the design environment to design a project, uh, then it's a very simple install that comes on. That's called the designer launcher. Uh, it takes two seconds. Um, concurrent development. Uh, it says enhanced in eight. That's eight isn't a limitation for only having eight developers. Eight is the new version of Ignition called Ignition 8 that we came out with last year. Uh, that is uh, basically the concurrent development's even better in Ignition 8. Uh, so you, have, you can have multiple folks working on systems at the same time. You could have 10 or 20 or 30 or even 100 folks who are all working on the same project at the same time. Uh, and then, um, you know, one person would make changes to a specific resource and then other folks can load that change and um, see the updates and uh, make changes themselves. And uh, the changes are automatically deployed to clients. As soon as you choose to publish a change, it will show up for all of the clients. There's no separate update process for the clients. There's no deployment of things. It's a single button press deployment to send out the changes to folks who are looking at it in a web browser or in a desktop client. The application, this client, this runtime, it's the third form of connectivity here that we have mentioned. As you can see in our graphic, the idea is that Ignition runs everywhere. Uh, if you aren't familiar, that little board right there is a Raspberry Pi, and so we decided to throw that in just to show that Ignition can scale down all the way to a simple um, embedded, kind of a toy PC, right? Um, but I, we normally, we don't have a lot of folks running on Raspberry Pis, and it's normally not seen as an industrialized device, but we do have a handful, and Ignition does run on a Raspberry Pi if you want or you need it to, uh, but we'll run just about anywhere. So you can see and control your process anywhere if you have this set up in a way that gives access. And of course, security is built into everything. Um, we'll mention that a little bit more here, but uh, the idea that you can run this wherever you want to or wherever you need to is very important. The fact that there's no installation, no restoring backups, no licensing makes it relatively easy to just spin up new clients whenever you want. This Ignition Perspective module is the HTML module that we have been talking about and alluding to. Uh, it leverages HTML5, CSS, yeah, has, has a very high level of security, um, lots of security tools, and we have a security hardening guide as well. Uh, if you had, if you wanted to take a look at that uh, or pass it on to your IT department if they're doing a security evaluation, it goes over the high level uh, security tools the um, and a little bit of a, the lower level as well in terms of the technologies that are supported behind the scenes. Uh, but we support uh, pretty much all the standard uh, security tools that are seen as security best practices these days for both web applications and just general IT applications. Ignition will run anywhere. Uh, and I've mentioned that several times now, but in, in browsers and phones, um, there's no plugins, it's native, uh, it's direct, you don't have to download separate things or separate installer or inside the web browser, click the CXE to install this piece to, to make all of this work. You don't have to do any of that, it just is direct inside the browser itself. Um, and it's a very familiar experience for folks 
Um, so everyone's familiar with Google Drive, Office 365, AWS, um, services online are something that is very, very common these days. And taking advantage of those same paradigms and the um, understanding of users of how those work uh, helps to make perspective something that's really effective for folks. You can access it anywhere. Um, we have an iOS and Android app as well. You can install those if you want access to the native items inside there, so GPS locations, uh, the camera if you wanted to take pictures of things, or if you want to do the camera for barcode scanning, for example. Um, also, no plugin, um, no installation, um, other than the apps. If you did want to do the apps, then you can install those. Um, if you don't want or you don't need those features from the apps, you don't need them at all. Um, and you can send those secure web links around and just share those with other folks. If they have access, if they've been granted permissions, uh, then they would be able to see the same things that you can see. Um, so you can send a link to a specific window or a screen uh, directly as a web link. You can get access or uh, get data to more people, faster speeds. Uh, that's a big part of what all of this is about. So being able to share it out on these mobile devices makes it uh, so it's easy to see um, and on desktops and sharing those links and uh, having that data just available uh, makes it so that it's not tied to specific users, not tied to specific devices. Uh, one thing that is pretty useful here as well, if you have security set up, uh, you can actually set up control over this in addition to monitoring. So being able to pull something up and control a location from a mobile device or from a web browser is very powerful. Uh, we actually had a, a company over here who was able to do a lot more social distancing and was able to essentially take a lot of their managers and their folks out of their offices, uh, their, um, their line leads, their supervisors, and just leave a skeleton crew running. Uh, they were a, a manufacturer over here. and they were able to completely switch over so that managers and supervisors were pulling up ignition and able to manage things from home without having to be there because they could launch ignition from their devices and they could see it over their VPN to their network, uh, which made a huge difference for the company's ability to continue to be effective. Uh, they're you know, part of critical infrastructure, one of the um, companies deemed over here as critical to the economy and to the environment. Um, so they had to keep running, but they preferred to have folks working from home where they could. And it opened up a lot more possibilities there than they would have had otherwise. One note on security, uh, for those of you who do have a little bit of background inside this, uh, HTTPS, SSL, TLS, um, it's all tied to that. So you have standard certificates um, that's part of uh, PKI, public key infrastructure, that is um, using the web standard technologies there. Technically behind the scenes, that's TLS 1.2. As soon as 1.3 becomes the new standard, Ignition will support that as well. We always support the latest security uh, features that are common. And it is very important for us to have this security in place because of the types of things that Ignition runs. We are in critical infrastructure. We are in a lot of industries that require a very high level of security. We do nuclear radiation detection systems, or we have integrators or customers who are doing that with Ignition. Um, we have folks, uh, you know, ignitions running in airports or running certain parts of airports. Um, and so it's, it's very, very important that security is one of our top focuses. Uh, we do have role in zone-based security, federated identity provider support, um, single sign-on, two-factor authentication. If you pull up a phone and you press a button and then it says, we're sending you a separate uh, confirmation. So maybe that's through Duo or or something else. Uh, we actually, at Inductive Automation, internally use Duo for our systems for two-factor authentication. We have full support for federated identity providers over SAML and OIDC, SAML and OIDC, um, which are the two uh, most common standards there for talking to Ping, Nocta, and some other systems. And so 
Um, this mentions those federated identity provider support features a little bit more extensively here as well. And these are these are some of the really common identity providers that you see out there. ADFS is one of the major ones because that's from Microsoft. That's Active Directory Federated Services, and it'll tie right into that. If your company is using that or your customers are using that, uh, it'll tie into anything else that's standard SAML or OpenID Connect as well. If we take a look at an example of an architecture here, this is a an example of a VPN architecture where basically you have the ignition server that is sitting on site, uh, sitting on premise. That ignition server uh, can be super lightweight. Uh, if you're just putting this beside another SCADA system and you're connecting it up and you're accessing all of those tags, uh, that system can be uh, just a very, very lightweight system, depending on the number of tags and screens that you're serving out. So seeing folks go as small as a dual core system with you know two or four gigs of memory, and then uh, that either is bound up as a new virtual machine or that can be a physical system and then connected over OPC over to an existing SCADA system. Alternatively, Ignition can be as pictured here where it's connected up directly to PLCs. Uh, it could be installed beside another SCADA system or some folks decide they love Ignition and they want it to be a uh, replacement for their existing SCADA system. And we love having that conversation too. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not required by any means to do that. And some folks actually take a look at Ignition and say, well, you know, it just makes sense over here. We just want web visualization or they might do that and then later on feel like they want it to grow. Any of those are a possibility. Ignition's licensing scales based on the use of it. Um, so in terms of the cost, uh, you can get a lightweight license or you can get a heavier weight license depending on what you're doing. What we're showing right here is Ignition is sitting on premise and then remote down at the bottom. Uh, at home, these clients, designers, uh, any folks who are accessing the system could be connected over VPN over to that ignition server. This is one possibility. A lot of folks are doing this. Um, if that VPN isn't in place, though, or if there's a desire to serve this out over the internet in a way that is not going over a VPN directly to someone's office, this is the general setup for that. So you can run an ignition server in the cloud uh, that can have a secure connection back to the office and that can be set up uh, completely read only um, that can be set up with encryption all the way uh, everywhere. And uh, then down at the bottom, that can be an encrypted connection up to the cloud, much like your banking website uh, using HTTPS, TLS, SSL, uh, have communication back and forth there and from home, you just go to a web address and have access to the Ignition Gateway. So I get very excited about this. I will quickly go through a demo uh, because I want to leave some time for questions here at the end as well. If you have any questions that you're thinking of right now, you can seed some of those questions too. Um, go ahead and just type those into the questions panel inside GoToMeeting and we'll get to those uh, as soon as the demo is done here. But I will go through, we will hop over and I will do a quick demonstration of what all of this looks like. So I have a fresh installation of Ignition that is sitting in the cloud right now. Um, and this is sitting on a website that is at secure.ia.io. Um, I will give you a link actually in a moment so you can take a look at this yourself too. But the first thing I'm going to do is pull up the designer. And inside the designer, I'm going to create a project. And it's going to be completely fresh. Um, as I said, I wanted to give you a, a sense of exactly what this looks like. So basically, all that we've done is downloaded Ignition and connected it up to a database. And then other than that, it is which takes about two seconds. So I, I just didn't want to show you that piece of it. Um, I wanted to skip past the database connection part um, just for the sake of time, but I'm going to create a new project here. Uh, this is the designer that I'm launching. I'll give it a project template. That's that perspective menu nav right there. Um, and I might as well give it a default database as well. 
we'll connect up to that. And this is launching. So, oh, there's one other thing that I did with the server, um, which was to install the security certificate, actually. So this is fully encrypted communication back and forth. Um, so if I come under here, this is perspective. I'm going to open up home. And all this says is welcome to perspective. This is, this is our uh, template project where I can come in, I can change anything that I want. Um, and I could say, um, um, welcome, let me say welcome attendees. And so this is, this is for you, uh, your webinar attendees right now. Um, and I could come in here and I could say, I want to, I want to show some things. And so on this system, we don't have any tags. Um, there's nothing that's really showing up under here because we don't have any device connections. Um, I'll just pull up and so we can take a look at how many folks are currently running. So the session count, I'll just drag it out right here. Um, and we can show this as a label right there. And might as well uh, just list out what this is. I'll come over here and I will say that this is um, sessions. Uh, in, in other words, the number of clients, number of folks looking at this. And it's just me right now. That's one. Um, very simple, very boring. Um, but I'll make this page a little bit more interesting in a moment. I'm going to come in and launch this. So I'll launch the session. This pulls up inside a web browser. I can see sessions one. And um, the other thing that I can do is I can share this with everyone. You can immediately see this. So keep in mind, all I did was install Ignition and then I put that certificate in place. Um, go ahead. As mentioned, everybody has a mobile phone, right? So go ahead and pull that out and point it at this screen. If you have a QR code reader, uh, you can use that QR code reader and read this QR code right here. If you don't, uh, that's completely fine. You can just type in that address. And this is going to give you a client a session that is going to load up and be connected to our server here. The server is sitting in the cloud. Um, as mentioned, all it has is an Ignition installation. Uh, and this server is in AWS in our case. So we spun it up inside uh, AWS. It could easily be Azure, it could be Google Cloud you know, Compute Platform, or it could be um, anything else that has internet access. Um, so with your phones there, um, if you're able to scan this, if you have an iPhone, um, you should be able to just point at this and scan it. If you have other, um, you know, other devices, you can just type the address in right there into the device um, at that HTTPS secure.ia.io. And so I thought this would be a, a cool thing to show off uh, so that you could follow along if you wanted to. Um, with these web sessions that we have with what I'm taking a look at right now. So um, if I switch back over to the designer, I can update this. Um, I'll pull off that session indicator since we don't really need it there. And I will start showing some other things. Basically, I'm going to connect to my remote system uh, in this case, and I have a plant system. I have a system that I'm calling a plant system that is on my local system here. It has a whole set of tags. Um, if this is connected over OPC UA to another system, um, you'd see it in the same way. So I'll launch this up. I'll show you what these tags look like inside the designer, just to, just to give you an idea. So this is a separate designer, and this is connecting to what you'd see as an on-premise or a plant um, location. Open this guy right here. And inside this, on the left hand side, we have a whole set of tags. So in my cloud system, we don't have any tags. In this system, we do have tags. So I'm pulling this up right now. And the tags that I have here, I want to share. I want these to be available online. I want to see this refrigeration system, for example. I want to see these motors that are right here, um, and I want to see those remotely. So what I'm going to do is set up that remote connection. 
that connection is as uh, simple as setting up a few different points here. So I'm going to come to my local system at my plant. I'm putting plant inside air quotes because um, it is on my laptop, but uh, you get the basic idea. This is exactly the same as it would be at a plant. I'm going to come down here and do a connection up to that server in the cloud. So I'll do the gateway network. This is an outgoing connection. So this is firewall friendly. I'm going to um, connect up to secure.ia.io. I am going to use protection right here, SSL TLS. Um, that's going to encrypt the connection and all the rest of that's fine. So I hit create new outgoing connection. On my cloud server, I'm going to come back over here. I am going to log in. And I'm going to accept that connection. So I'll go to the gateway network. We have an incoming connection right here. I will approve that connection. This is part of the security. Make sure that you know who it is and that it's approved. And now that connection is incoming right there. And I'm connected. I'm set up. I've got a good status for all of this. Um, we can see that active gateway network connection here. Um, and then I'm going to set it up so I can access those tags remotely. So I'll come over to my uh, tag providers, set up a remote tag provider, and tell it I want to connect to this gateway right there. So we can see this is the one that's connected uh, from my local system. And I'll connect up to that tag provider called default. I'll call this uh, plan, call this site. And uh, capitalization doesn't really matter, but uh, sometimes I care. <laughs> so now that's set up um, and that is all good to go. Um, I'm going to come back over to the designer and at that uh, central designer, I can take a quick look and I will be able to see this up and running there. So come back to this designer. Um, this is the set of providers and under site. This is all streaming um, from my local system over, in this case, a cellular network up to that location. And you can see all of these tags coming in. You can see real time data coming in from these tags as well. I have this streaming. And to make this interesting, I can pull these out and we can show these on the screen. Um, so I can do it through labels if I wanted to. Um, I can do it through other visualizations. So maybe I actually want this to be a tank visualization that I'm taking a look at there. Um, that is going to show the different uh, levels. In. So there's 79% right there, for example. Um, and if I come into my humidity, I can take a look at that. I can take a look at my um, other temperatures. I'm going to hit save um, really quickly. And if you're following along on the web, you're going to see this pop up as well. But if you've got that session open on your browser or inside your mobile device, that immediately comes through right there. We also have, uh, I can pull these out and show a few different types of displays here too. So there's an LED display. Um, and one of the other cool things that I can do is I could set up really easily some basic control too. So I'll come down. Uh, maybe I want to do it to a slick processor here that I have connected. This is an N70 tag. If I drag this guy out to the screen, um, and actually I'll, I'll give it a nice, uh, if you're familiar with HOA, uh, I'll give it a nice uh, display for that. So I'll come under my components, uh, grab that multi-state button, drop it on the screen right here, uh, and then bind this guy up for the control and for the indicator there. Control can be bi-directional. I could take this guy out um, and make it into a uh, simple. Um, oh, we could do we could do a boolean that has a uh, a slider here that was going back and forth. Um, so you could pick different values inside that slider, for example. Um, and I could go side to side for that value that's coming in here. This value happens to not be anything right now because it's a zero, but it'll update in a moment there. Um, and then I'm going to come over and um, save that off and switch back over and give write access. So everything defaults to read-only access. Um, so I'm just going to come into the service security 
can say that we aren't going to let anyone edit tags, but I am going to allow for writing back to tags in this case to allow control. So switch this guy to read write, hit save there. And now you'll see, if I pull this up, and if you have it pulled up, this hand off auto that is showing up right there. Um, there is bi-directional communication over that. Um, and then there is the ability to slide things. And uh, you folks are doing a lot with this already. <laughs> so, so I can see things happening based on uh, what folks are pulling up inside your own systems, what you're passing right now. Um, so it's great to see that folks are following along with this and, and playing with it. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of other things that are, are pretty nice. So on the left-hand side, there's charts and alarms as well. If you click over to uh, either one of these, if you click to alarms, you'll notice these alarms are here right away. These are alarms that are configured at my site um, and they're automatically streaming through. The other thing uh, that you'll notice under charts here, um, this is a static chart, but I can easily add in some history. Uh, and because I'm recording that history at site, it'll just come through immediately. So I'm going to do that, take me about two seconds. So I'll go under my chart right here open up that chart view that has that default set of data. And uh, if you go to the chart, you'll see it update as soon as I make the binding right here. I'm going to go to a tag history binding, pop over. And um, in this case, I'm going to take a look at that provider. It's under site, of course. Um, and uh, we will, um, what do we want to show on the screen? Um, maybe the accumulator level is interesting and the ambient humidity. Those will be good. Um, I will go for the last, uh, I don't know, last 10 minutes might be interesting. Um, set it up so that it's pulling. Um, hit OK right here. And then that's going to pull that information in. You'll see that update on a second by second basis right there. And that will pull in directly into uh, your screen that you have open right now. I have it set to only a resolution of 100 points. I'll increase that to a thousand. That'll give us higher resolution here. Um, and you'll be able to see even more detail inside this system as it moves forward. So um, those are the things that I wanted to show very quickly before jumping over and talking a little bit about uh, and going through the questions that we have here. So um, we don't have much in terms of questions, but if you do have questions, please add them right now to the question panel. I know that we're right at the end of the hour and I want to respect everybody's time. I will pop right back over here and pop to the um, questions that we do have. And we actually have a few thank you messages uh, for folks who had to leave right at the top of the hour. Um, and we don't have any specific questions. So, um, Maybe uh, as we wrap this up, if you do have additional questions, if you do have anything you want to add, go ahead and put those questions in there. Um, just a quick review. Basically, uh, what we set up right now is this. It's this architecture that you see right here. That gateway network is connected. I have the site server, I have the cloud server, and then that remote home is what I just launched and you just launched as you were taking a look at all of this. Uh, to see the system in real time and to do the control that we were just looking at right there. The way that this is set up is a simple installation um, that could be uh, just inside this VPN architecture example with a single ignition server that's there. Or if it's in the cloud, I could set it up in the way that I just showed. Either way, it's quick, it's simple, uh, it's drag and drop for most of the things that you are going to set up. And we encourage you, if you're interested, to play around with it, give it a try. You can try it absolutely free, free to our demo. Uh, we have a great site called Inductive University that is instructive, that will walk you through how to do a variety of things. And uh, we also have some fantastic folks with local support on the call right now. And we have these folks available to you at any point. So. You have contact information on your screen right there. Um, you've got a phone number, uh, you have email addresses, uh, and you have some smiling faces to show that they're friendly. So uh, it's, uh, it's good to be here with everyone. Um, any last uh, closing remarks uh, from you folks at Element 8?
Yeah, thanks very much, Kevin. That was that was uh, super easy and, and valuable. Um, I hope everybody online found it valuable. And uh, yeah, just thank you again to everyone for joining us. Uh, do check out our website, make contact with us. We'll be sure to reach out to you as well. And, and thank you again for your time. And, and thanks to you, Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, we're, we're very happy to be here today. And uh, we look forward to additional webinars that we can share with you and share with everyone else. So uh, with that, I think we will wrap up here. I appreciate everyone's attendance today. And as mentioned, please feel free to reach out to Element 8 for any ignition questions or any contacts or um, any purchase requests or to talk through technical details or architectures or anything else that you might have. So um, we are happy to be supporting everyone in this and we're happy to uh, be with you and with Element 8 and uh, appreciate it once again. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.